Hello, everybody. It's about that time. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, thanks a bunch for stopping guys. I do appreciate it. It's been a while since I've done a beer review. Uh, guys, I've been taking a little break. And uh, before we get into today's beer, uh, Richard, one of my subscribers, notified me that he'd seen a post on my last beer review. I don't know why I didn't get a notification, but I didn't. Uh, and it was Rico's father, and he wanted to notify everybody, especially on my channel and to me, that Rico had passed away. So, uh, very sad news. Uh, and basically what Rico's father is telling me that he basically drank himself to death. So guys, when I say drink responsibly, that doesn't mean if, you, if you're going to get behind a wheel or, 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 or some kind of motor vehicle or anything like that, or even heavy machinery or anything like that. When, you, when I say drink responsibly, uh, that also means your well-being too. Don't drink to excess. When I was a young buck, I mean, I, I did the exact same thing. I mean, as much as I could drink all the time, and I'm damn lucky to still be here. And it took a heart attack to wake me up. Uh, so, uh, all you guys that uh, think you're young and invincible, you're not. And Rico's uh, tragic death is just an example of that. I mean, you don't have to be somebody that's been drinking all your life and you're 60, 70, 80 years old and you die from uh, alcoholism or, you know, liver failure or something like that, alcohol related. I mean, it can happen to you young. Uh, so, uh, guys, when I say drink responsibly, that means you young cats too. I mean, it can happen to somebody uh, that's very young, like Rico was. So, very sad news, and a lot of you may have already heard, I pinned that post that Rico's father uh, on the last beer review, and, uh, and I didn't have any beers to review, I hadn't been across town to buy anything special, so uh, I decided to go over there and pick up some stuff, at, at least something that I could do a beer review with, and, uh, and let everybody know about Rico, and, and, and honor uh, Rico's memory, and uh, and everybody say a prayer for his family and, and his friends, his close friends, because uh, we're going to miss him. We, we really are. And I seen this one and, uh, at the beer store, and it, it just stood out like a shining light. Rico Solvent, double IPA. Against the Grain Brewing. This is a 16 ouncer and guys the the date is there and it's smeared all over the place but uh, I couldn't I couldn't make it out what it says but I think it's fairly fresh. Uh, I couldn't pass it up. Anyway back to this beer. I don't want to bring everybody down this one, but everybody knows that you're not invincible. So, anyway, Against the Grain Brewing is out of Kentucky. They uh, make a lot of tasty beers, guys. They really, really do. Uh, this is a 8.2 percenter, I think it's what. No, this is a 9 percenter, so. Evidently, they've done this one before because uh, Beer Advocate has it at 8.2%. So, let's jump over to Untap. Wait a minute, before we go over there, they have, they have some notes here. An India Pale Ale featuring Nelson Sauvin Hops. Of course, that's where the name comes from. Uh, uh, Nelson Sauvin Hops have usually uh, some kind of great taste to them. So, 
Uh, named after the Sauvignon Blanc grape, it is a variety of hop developed and grown in New Zealand. It has a strong fruity flavor and aroma that is described as resembling white wine or fresh crushed grapes or gooseberries. Some reviewers of this hop perceive the fruitiness as being very tropical with description including passion fruit, tangerines, and grapefruit. These hops are organic and are about four times as expensive as their normal American hop variety. So, pricey hop to brew with. I don't think I've ever brewed with that hop. And I haven't brewed in a long time, guys. So, uh, uh, 68 IBUs according to Untapped. So, I don't know what to expect here. There are a few pictures of the can on here and just a partial picture and I didn't go looking at them but it doesn't look like a New England style and they're not claiming it to be that style. Uh, it says here sexy beer from the sexy man brewed with Nelson Sauvignon hops as sexy as Rico himself. Damn right. Uh, this double IPA has a strong fruity flavor resembling that of fresh crushed Sauvignon Blanc grapes, gooseberries and passion fruit. Let it be known that Rico is out for one thing to be inside you. So, uh, Rico, you're definitely inside of me and will be for everybody. We're going to remember you and I hope everybody, like I said, remembers my dear good friend, Rico. So, uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. We've gone over the ABV and IBUs and all the information. So, let's get it popped open. And see what we got. Ah, made a big mess. That's what we got. I don't want to pour for some reason. It wants to run down the side of the can. Uh, that's about all we're going to get in there right now. About two fingers of head on that four guys. It's got a slight chill haze to it. It's not super cloudy and I can see light through the thin part of the glass down there. Uh, a nice looking beer. Uh, I mean it's a uh, it's a little darker in the amber color uh, but uh, it's a nine percenter so it's, it's a, a little bit more malt uh, in the, the brewing and more hops too as far as that goes uh, in the imperial or double IPAs as opposed to the single so sometimes they are a little darker. Uh, what, a classic example is Dogfish 60 and Dogfish 90, and the 90 is much darker than the 60. So, a lot of times uh, the, the bigger ABV beers will be uh, uh, a little darker sometimes. So, but still looks good. What do you think? All right, to the nose we go. Ah, maybe just a little bit of. I am getting a little bit of passion fruit and grapes and I don't know if it's a single hop beer they're just mentioning the the, the Sauvignon and Nelson Sauvignon hops have you so it may be a single hop beer so I'm not getting a whole lot of anything else maybe I can taste it let's find out cheers everybody cheers Rico love you brother we're gonna miss you Cheers, everybody. Ah. Piece of beer. I mean, it's not blowing my hair back on my sock. I was hoping it was going to be a little tastier than what I'm actually getting. Because these, these guys that are against the brain, the grain, they, uh, they, they do make some tasty stuff. Uh, but not everything is home run so I'm getting some maltiness I'm getting some grapes and maybe a little bit of pine uh, tropical fruit notes are very very subtle guys the grapes is what's standing out the maltiness and the grapes and not being able to read that exact date. I don't know exactly if the age of the beer is having any influence on the hops or malt in this beer. And that was the only one on the shelf. So I didn't have an option to choose another. And it was this one or none. So. But anyway, 
Uh, like I said, it's a decent beer. I don't think it's an outstanding world class beer, but I think it's a, I think it's a decent beer. Uh, it's right out of the fridge, guys. So we're gonna do our normal deal and let it come up to room temperature. But uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a nice, uh, worthy beer of remembering our good friend Rico. So, guys, let me sip on it. It'll come up to room temperature. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, it's a tasty beer, guys. That's where I'm gonna leave this uh, this beer. Uh, and I'm, the reason I'm doing that is because I can't exactly read the date. I mean, it's, it's kind of up in the air whether this is where they wanted this beer to be, having the more maltiness and stuff, uh, or not. But uh, not exactly what I'm looking for in a double IPA as far as the hot presence, aroma, and taste. It's just not, my, not quite up to snuff. Uh, so anyway, uh, and guys, I'm going to take a uh, change from what I typically do, uh, do the final chug and and, uh, and do the grade and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the grade on this one now and save the final chug. Uh, to me, guys, this is, it's a B plus beer and that's, and that's where I'm going to go with this. Uh, 88 for me on this one. And... Uh, and I, and that may be because I, I can't I can't read the date so I, that's where I'm at on that uh, not knowing if it's an older beer or or not uh, that would make the difference if I knew it was fresh and it tasted like that uh, it, it probably wouldn't even get to be plus but uh, I'm thinking it it might have a little bit of age on it uh, it's malty as it is so anyway. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. Beer Advocate has it at 90 in their outstanding range. Uh, Untapped has it at uh, 3.87. Uh, so, uh, a whole lot of people have commented on this beer on Untapped. 32,400 uh, people have made a comment on this beer. So, they've been doing this beer for a while. And it's the first time I've ever had it. So, uh, Anyway, uh, with that being said, uh, that's in their B-plus range, and I'm more in line with that than I am their advocates on this one. But anyway, it is what it is. And guys, uh, this, uh, this beer review, again, is dedicated to my good friend and beer brother, uh, Rico. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, it recently passed away, so... Uh, Rest in peace, my my friend and brother, my brother here. Uh, it's a, a very sad day for for everybody that that knew him and uh, his family for sure. So, uh, guys, this is a final chug for my brother Rico. Cheers, Rico. Rest in peace, my friend. I'm going to miss you, my friend. All right, guys. Uh, till we meet again, we'll all think of Rico. See you next time.